If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably because a child you love and care for is differently wired. Are they also struggling in their current educational setting, seen only for what they're doing wrong while longing for positive relationships with peers and others? Envision a world where your child's unique abilities are not just recognized, but celebrated. A world where they can connect with others and their true potential is seen and appreciated. The Strength-Based Assessment Lab's mission is to build a world for your child just like that. Through its innovative approach, it aims to empower students, families, educators, and professionals to create positive, effective, and collaborative learning experiences. Be a part of shaping a brighter future for your child. Visit www.bgs.edu to learn more about what a strength-based assessment could mean for your family. That's bgs.edu. So you are someone who likes to have the, when the alarm goes off, it hits you as a surprise, but that's better than looking at it and seeing, oh crap, I only have four minutes left. that makes me ridiculously stressed. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Ridiculously stressed is not really the best of feelings. Welcome to the Tilt Parenting Podcast, a podcast featuring interviews and conversations aimed at inspiring, informing, and supporting parents raising differently wired kids. I'm your host, Debbie Reaver. And today's episode features another short conversation with my 11-year-old son, Asher. Today, we're devoting our whole conversation to a subject near and dear to pretty much every family's life these days, screen time. Like most of you listening, we have been trying to figure out how to best balance, manage, and negotiate Asher's engagement with all things screen so that it doesn't negatively impact our family and so that it doesn't take over his life. And before we get started, to be clear... We're not here to say that our way is the right way or that we have all the answers when it comes to exactly how much screen time is the right amount. But because the issue of screen time has been a source of significant stress and discussion in our family over the years, and I know I'm not alone here, we thought it might be useful to share some of our strategies for making Asher's relationship with the computer and iPad more workable for our family. I hope you enjoy this episode and don't forget to check out the show notes as well because we're going to share our new and improved screen time planning worksheet as a downloadable. To learn more about this podcast and Tilt, the revolution for parents raising atypical kids, visit www.tiltparenting.com. Darren and I are prepping for a big move at the moment. So we are fully leaning into any and everything that simplifies things. And that absolutely includes mealtimes. At a time when my executive functioning skills are being pushed to the limit, even planning and executing dinner for our family these days can feel like a really big lift. That's why I'm especially grateful for Green Chef, a meal service that offers pre-measured and prepped ingredients to my door. Each box is packed with foods you can feel good about, like whole fruits and vegetables, plus lean protein and whole grain options. In fact, one of the things I love most about Green Chef is that they offer options that prioritize gut and brain health, with science-backed recipes that feature ingredients like fiber, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. During this time of lots of stress, it feels really grounding to know we're supporting ourselves nutritionally. I will take all the support I can get. And Green Chef doesn't just cover dinner recipes. I can add high quality breakfasts, lunches, and snacks to my weekly box from Green Market. Green Chef has a special offer for Tilt listeners. Go to greenchef.com slash tilt50 and use code tilt50 to get 50% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's 50% off plus 20% off your next two months when you use the code tilt50 at greenchef.com slash tilt50. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Maybe I've watched too many seasons of The Amazing Race, but every time I have to go somewhere on the subway, I treat it like a competition. It's all about making the right gut decisions about which route will get me there the fastest. Sometimes those decisions get me where I'm going early, and other times my gambles don't really pay off. Probiotics can't help with most gut decisions, but if your gut needs a little support, Ritual has your back. Their Symbiotic Plus, a three-in-one supplement, has clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. I've been using Symbiotic Plus for about six months now, and it's become a core part of my morning routine. I take the mini capsule every morning while making my way through my inbox, whether I'm at home or I'm on the road, because it doesn't need to be refrigerated. And the capsule itself is delayed released, which helps it survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract for delivery to the colon. And that's exactly where we want it to go. 
Ritual invested in a study modeling the human colon, which showed that Symbiotic Plus significantly increased microbial diversity and the growth of beneficial bacteria. There's no more shame in your gut game. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash tilt. Start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash tilt for 25% off. Maybe a month or so ago, Asher, we were using a new screen time planning worksheet. Yep. And it was a- new back then. It was new back then. And as we explained on a previous podcast, we were using the bubble system, which I'm kind of borrowing from the Pomodoro method, which is in this productivity planner that I use. But not to advertise for them or anything. But not to advertise for them. <laughs> However, I, yet. I noticed that the screen time planning worksheet was starting to be less effective. Do you remember what that, why that was the case? That was because I start, I got bored. I didn't, I didn't really reflect on, on what I was going to do with my time. Sometimes that works. Like, for example, I was playing a game called the Kerbal Space Program, and I was in the middle of sending something to the moon, and then my timer went off, and, and I immediately did everything to get ready as fast as I could and quickly reset the timer and jump back on to make sure I hadn't missed my maneuver node. So, just for reference, in a previous episode of this podcast, the one about distraction, Asher and I talked about the screen time planning worksheet he was using at that time, the one we're talking about here. If you want to see a copy of that, visit the show notes for that episode at tiltparenting.com slash session three. Our deal was that Asher would set his own timer for a set period of time, and then when the timer went off, he'd fill in a bubble and determine how he wanted to spend his next chunk of time, if he had any time left, and then set a new timer. The goal was both to keep him focused on what he wanted to achieve during his screen time so he wouldn't get upset if he squandered his time, as well as put the onus on him to manage his own time. Okay, back to the conversation. So I think what was happening was we were both getting lazy. Yeah. And what I noticed starting to happen was that your timer was going off. You were acknowledging it. You were setting another timer and you were diving right back in. So what was the key piece we were missing? The key piece was to reflect. Like when I already know what I'm going to do with my next time, then that's great. But if I don't, right, and I just jump back on, then I'm like, then I just, I I take a portal to the universe of distraction. <laughs> so... I brought in a copy of our current screen time planning because we made now, a... with more advanced screen time Yes, with more advanced screen time So we have our screen time planner and we took the original one and we added some steps at the bottom as a visual reminder for you for what you need to do every time your alarm goes off. So could you walk us through what those things are? Yeah. So first, when my alarm goes off, I, j- I take a pause for what I'm doing. Okay. And then I do an ac- some sort of activity, usually jumping jacks, to get my head out of the world of screen time. It's so magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> and then I fill in a bubble on my sheet. I take ten deep breaths. Then I see if I have enough time left on my sheet to take 30 more minutes. And if I do, I think about how old. Spend that time, and I start a 30-minute long timer. Okay. So that is, like, the whole system for what happens in between these 30-minute chunks. Yeah, that's the important part. We just added this to the Screen Time Planner about three weeks ago. And we were doing it because what we realized, and we had a long conversation about this, because things were starting to slip back to a not-so-great space with Screen Time in general. And so we had like an emergency meeting, right? Yeah. And we were like, hey, these old screen time planners worked. Maybe we could revise them and improve, improvisate, improvisate them. Right. And I think what we are, like, I specifically remember a, a conversation where we realized this will work. Yes. Right. I mean, it takes it. I have to form a habit, which I'm, I'm, I'm forming. (laughs) <laughs> right? But it works. And we're going to keep using this strategy until it stops working. 
Because <laughs> that's what you do to strategies. <laughs> so, yes, I would say I agree that it is working for now. Do you feel like you are actually forming like new habits? Yeah, definitely. Because you know what, Asher? One of our big initiatives or our big things that we've been working on this year is you being responsible for tracking your own time because it used to be all on me or your dad. And then whenever something happened that I didn't like, I would blame you. Right. So we were constantly, we we're like the time police and we were always having to be like, hey, time's up. Hey, time's up. So we were then, bad cop, bad cop. We were being the bad cop and we were bearing the brunt of your dissatisfaction with that turn of events. Right. And really, we know that it's important for you to start managing your own time. Yeah, because then I'm responsible and then I don't take out my annoyance on anybody else. Right. And that's what we want. Then I'm like, Oh, God, I'm such an idiot. I should have I should have thought about my time. I'll remember to do that in future. But let me ask you this. Probably two and a half years ago, we bought a special timer that is just for kids who struggle with time. And it I don't know if you remember this. It's in your closet somewhere. I do. You do. <laughs> really you cool. really dislike this timer, but it has it has like a red zone, it's a really yellow intrusive. zone. What? It's intrusive? Yeah, it feels a bit intrusive. Why? And it feels a little bit baby Okay. You didn't like the design. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, and I can't, I can't have a dissatisfactory timer, can I? Well, you know what else I think is another point that's specific to you, and maybe other kids feel the same way, but you don't like it to be visible, so Yeah, because that makes me really ridiculously stressed. I'm like, oh, crap, am I going to be able to finish this in this much time because I was planning to spend the next time on this? And, ah, ah, and then I spend the whole thing stressing out instead of actually doing what I meant to do. And I'm like, ah, it all happened like I thought it would. Now I have to take extra time into this so I can finish this. And it just completely throws me off. So you get really anxious about yes, because yeah. I'm like, oh crap! I have to, I have to finish launching this rocket so I can watch this video that was really funny. So <laughs> you are someone who likes to have the when the alarm goes off, it hits you as a surprise. But that's better than looking at it and yes. seeing, oh crap! I only because have four then minutes that makes left. Makes me ridiculously stressed. Okay, all right, that's good to know. And ridiculously stressed is not really the best of feelings. No. So that's why the visual timer didn't work for you. That makes perfect yeah. sense. Especially not when you're using a limited commodity. Right. Otherwise known as screen time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So do you see, do you feel like this is getting easier? Like this it's getting whole easier. routine? Definitely. Okay. It's awesome. I would concur. I would say I that. I do forget forget occasionally like once i was doing something with alarm today i was doing something with alarms and my timer went off and i didn't hear it because i was i was like previewing alarm sounds for something that needed alarming <laughs> and it was like did it did it did it did it it's like no i don't like that sound it sounds like there are two alarm sounds going off at once i'll listen to this <laughs> one and then by the time i listened to the next one then my first alarm had stopped <laughs> And then I was like, and then later up, I looked at it and I was like, ah, why? <laughs> and then I crossed off 45 minutes. Yeah, you took responsibility for that time, which I think is great. Yeah. It's not like, it didn't get time, so it doesn't count. Okay. I'll just fill in a half hour and be really you know, You're being very responsible with your time. I have noticed a big difference. And I would say, I think this is working. You have asked me when we had our emergency meeting you asked me to help you, to help support you in remembering to do these steps, like the taking 10 deep breaths and taking a pause and all of that. And so what I've been doing sometimes is setting my timer at the same time. And then I just kind of... Oh, you're so smart. Well, you know, I have my tricks. But that way, even if I'm working in another room or doing something else... I am aware of what's happening. And if a few minutes past that timer go off, I can just poke my head and say, hey, what's going on? And then you'll realize, oh, timer should have gone off. 
Oh my no. goodness. It's really not that dramatic. <laughs> Why me? So I feel comfortable doing that because that's not me pestering you, but that's me <laughs> yeah. kind of being your backup because yeah. I feel like if you can really form this new habit, it's going to just get easier and easier, right? Right. But now my face hurts. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because of all the, the dramatic news. Oh, my God. <laughs> the dramatic news. The dramatic news. <gasps> okay, so moving on. Um, <laughs> before, I think we'll probably do more of these conversations about screen time. And actually, we have another one we're going to talk about in another episode. Because this is like probably the number one struggle that most families with kids whether they're differently wired or whether they're as neurotypical as can be screen time is a huge challenge so um i'm hopeful that these strategies are helpful for other people do you have anything that you want to add before we say goodbye can you keep the part with the dramatosity in the podcast okay (laughs) Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Tilt Parenting Podcast. As a follow-up, we recorded this episode several months ago, and I'm happy to report that we are still using this particular screen time planner, and it still seems to be working. It's undergone some design tweaks, you know, updated fonts and important things like that. But again, this strategy with myself or my husband, Darren, as a backup timer seems to be working. If you'd like to download our screen time planner, you can get that and the other resources mentioned in this episode on the show notes page, which you can find at tiltparenting.com slash session 12. One last note, we're getting lots of great feedback on these special Asher episodes, specifically that parents are listening to them with their kids, which we think is just so cool. If you have a topic you'd like to hear Asher me discuss on the show, please email us at debbie at tiltparenting.com or leave a comment on the show notes page. Lastly, if you like this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes. That helps ensure our podcast is easily visible for other parents raising differently wired kids. Thanks again for tuning in. And for more information on the Tilt Revolution and to sign up for our community, visit www.tiltparenting.com. Are you overwhelmed by the things that get in the way of you doing what you want to do? Are you looking for ways to simplify life to better align with your values? Do you want to create space in your schedule so you have room for more of the good stuff? Play, joy, relationships, gratitude, and more? If you answered yes to any of these questions, I invite you to check out Edit Your Life, a podcast to help you edit the unnecessary from your life so you have more room to enjoy the awesome. Through episodes with me, Christine Co., and a range of super smart, compassionate, and thoughtful guests, you'll come away with big picture insights and practical ways to declutter your home, schedule, and mental space without getting bogged down by perfection. I have always believed that small moments and actions matter tremendously. My goal is to help you find agency and space in your life through doable baby steps that will leave you feeling accomplished instead of overwhelmed. Check out Edit Your Life wherever you enjoy your podcasts.